Hello there, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm here with you guys again with another presentation concerning the mushrooms of Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about identifying and picking those mushrooms. Today we're going to be looking at the milk caps of Saskatchewan. So the genre included will be Lactarius and Lactiflus. Now I'm not sure if I'm saying that last one right, because I don't know what sound two used together makes. But that is a relatively new genus that we're looking at, Lactiflus. So what is a milk cap? Milk caps are agaric mushrooms, once again belonging to the Lactarius and Lactiflus genus. These bleed a liquid called latex when the gills are damaged. They have concentric color rings on the cap. So usually a milk cap will be a solid color. And then when you look at the top of the cap, there will be different shades of that color arranged in concentric bands from the center out to the margin. These have stipes that are filled with pith and hollow out by maturity. And that is very similar to the Rosella genus, which we'll deal with in the presentation on brittle gills. And these also have no dangerously toxic species in Saskatchewan. That doesn't mean there aren't species that won't make you feel sick, but there's no species that will kill you or put you on dialysis for the rest of your life. The very first mushroom that we're going to be looking at is the peppery milk cap, Lactiflus piperatus. So, the cap is off-white, discoloring brownish-yellow with darker concentric bands. You can see those bands there, kind of what I'm talking about, almost like cream and off-white together. And you can see what I mean now when I say concentric bands, they, they radiate outwards. So these are convex, becoming depressed or funnel shape with age. They're zonate, so they've got kind of, if you run your finger along it, oftentimes you can feel kind of a tactile difference between the bands. The margin is down rolled, becoming wavy, and you can see that's starting to happen on the left-hand mushroom in the photo there. And they're, they're very firm. They're also kind of heavy. Uh, they're a good-sized mushroom up to eight inches in diameter, and often you'll find these caked with dirt and leaf litter. So this is a good mushroom to be picking right after a rainfall if you know where they are. And you can go get them because you'll be able to wipe that dirt away easily. If not, you may have to soak them, or you may want to take some sort of wet wipes or paper towel with a spray bottle or something to uh, spray them off. Because once you pick them, it, it becomes the longer you wait, the harder it is to get that those leaves off. It goes through some sort of process after being picked where it kind of gums the stuff up on them, even worse as it begins to dry out. Here's a size reference for you. Then they do get quite a bit bigger than that. Eight inches is a big mushroom. So the gills are off-white to cream. They are adnate to the current. And you can see the ones that are adnate. They're just reaching across. They're not dipping down or really all that decurrent. They can be very slightly decurrent though. Sometimes you call that a decurrent tooth. Uh, they are very crowded. You can see they're just smushed together. There is frequent short gills and you can kind of see spaces where there are so many short gills that it's created a space in that crowded mess. Uh, these do bleed a white latex and you can see it there those white beads of liquid and it has a white spore print. The stipe is off-white in color. It is cylindrical. You can see it there on the right hand side. Uh, it is a central attachment to the cap. They're very solid but once again uh, over time as it reaches maturity and then past maturity it will actually hollow out as the the center portion of it becomes chalky and almost powdery. Uh, the stipe is up to three inches high and then one inch in width. 
These are mycorrhizal with hardwoods. They are terrestrial, scattered to gregarious, and they occur summer through fall. In terms of their edibility, this one is subjective. Uh, I, I consider them to be good. Um, they are spicy, they're peppery, and for some people, they they won't be able to palate that. I, I always joke that uh, a good part of Saskatchewan finds ketchup to be too spicy for them. So if you like curry, if you like spicy foods, this will be one that you'll want to look, look for. These are good in sauces. They're good for pickling, uh, for intermediate mushroom pickers. It's just cleaning them. That's, a, that's the problem. Here is a lookalike alert for you. Lactifluce piperatus is on the left. Lactarius pubescens is on the right. Lactarius pubescens is mildly toxic. It is very, very spicy, uh, intolerably, intolerably so for most people. It is, however, uh, eaten in places like Turkey and such uh, after special preparation to reduce the toxicity. But they do look fairly similar, so you'd want to look both of those up if you plan on picking this mushroom. Next species. This is the weeping milk cap, Lactifluus volemus. The cap is orangish brown and lighter towards the margin, almost more orange than anything else towards the margin. Uh, it is convex, becoming depressed or funnel shaped. Rarely these will develop a central umbo at which point it may be very difficult to determine it's a milk cap. I will say, however, the only ones of these that I've seen coming from someone's photos of mushrooms in Saskatchewan have had the umbo on them. These are zonate. The margin is down rolled and velvety, and this grows up to six inches in diameter, but usually smaller. Here's a size reference for you. You see this one looks like it was taken from relatively dry conditions. It's become areolates there uh, with the cracking. The gills are cream in color. They are adnate. They are crowded. Short gills are present. It bleeds a white latex that over time turns brown after it's been exposed to air and it produces white spores. The stipe is orangish to tan in color. See there, it's almost yellow, but you can see the see a browning up there as well. Uh, this is cylindrical. It has a central attachment to the cap. It is solid, becoming hollow with age, and it's up to about four inches high and one inch thick. These are mycorrhizal with conifers and hardwoods. They are terrestrial, they grow as solitary to gregarious, and they are found summer throughout the fall. In terms of their edibility, these are choice mushrooms. They are excellent in any dish. However, they do smell like dead fish until they are cooked. And I don't mean dead fish in a good way, I mean in, in a really dead fish ugh, way. And that's uh, one of the ways in which you can also ID this mushroom. And these are for intermediate mushroom pickers. Next species, or pair of species. Actually, this is best described as many species that you can't really tell apart. Uh, these are the saffron milk caps. These are lactarius species. So uh, thus far, we've been dealing with lactiflus. This is lactarius. Uh, so the saffron milk cap is Lactarius deliciosus, which likely doesn't even occur in Canada or North America. But instead, that's a group of many species that all look the same. But under the microscope, they do have differences. And on the right-hand side, we have there the false saffron milk cap, which is Lactarius deterimus. And on the left, that's just one of the species that represents what we find here. So the cap for both is going to be orangish yellow 
lighter towards the margin. They'll be convex, becoming depressed, as you can see happening there in that example. They are zonate, right? You can run your fingers along that and there should be te textural difference, like a tactile difference between the, the different color zones. They are firm. Uh, you should, if enough pressure, be able to almost snap it in half. Uh, the margin is downrolled when young and becoming sometimes a bit wavy. Uh, these stain red and then green if you damage them. And then these are six inches in diameter. Here you can see a size reference. And it could be a good size. Gills. The gills are orange in color. They are adnate or decurrent. You can see that when there is to some extent uh, decurrent with a bit of a decurrent tooth, right? It's just starting to become decurrent. Uh, short gills are frequent. You can see them at the top there. This, these stain green when damaged. They bleed orange latex that stains red, then green. So if you were to, to cut it, uh, it would be orange latex coming out, not white. And eventually it would turn green. And it ha they have a, a cream spore print. There's a spore print for you. Stipe, so solid orange for the most part in Lactarius, uh, Deuterimus, orange sometimes with darker orange spotting and Lactarius deliciosa species. You can see the two differences there. They are cylindrical, they have a central attachment, they are filled with a pith that hollows away by maturity, just as with the others, and uh, they're up to three inches high and about an inch thick. So I've already gone through this concerning where and what Lactarius deliciosus is. Uh, they're mycorrhizal with both spruce and pine, terrestrial, they're solitary to scattered, and found in the summer through to fall. Some years you can hardly find these at all. Other years you can't take a step in the boreal forest of tripping over one of these. So really depends. Two years ago is a very good season for them. So in terms of the edibility, they're good. Um, they're mild with a bitter aftertaste. Now here's the sad story. The Lactarius deliciosus that deserves the name deliciosus is a European species. One of the differences between that and the ones here in North America, um, as far as I've read and determined by eating these, is that these ones aren't nearly as good to eat. Uh, beyond that, I guess it's subjective or there there is definitely more than two species of saffron milk caps in Saskatchewan, so maybe one of the other species tastes really, really good. I'll have to kind of explore to figure that out. They are okay in sauces, like a, like a, I've eaten them and enjoyed them in an Alfredo sauce or say in a spaghetti sauce. Uh, good for pickling from what I hear. These are for intermediate mushroom pickers. And you can see on the right hand side there of that photo, the pith that I'm talking about, that stipe has hollowed and that, that kind of white solid filling has turned to dust. So that's what I'm talking about in those regards. Here's a lookalike for you. Lactarius deliciosus or deuterimus on the left. Lactarius tormentosus on the right. Uh, I, I, once again, this is the same as Lactarius pubescens. It is mildly toxic. It contains the sweater pins. I think I said that wrong as well, but whatever. Um, they can make you have gastrointestinal issues that go away relatively quickly. So not gonna kill you once again, but uh, it's also extremely peppery, very, very hot. So if you don't like hot and acrid, then you'll know immediately with a little taste which one you're you're looking at because Lactarius deliciosus is not peppery at all. It is relatively gritty though. The indigo milk cap, my favorite from Saskatchewan. This is Lactarius indigo. 
So the cap, instantly recognizable. Blue, lighter towards the margin, convex, becoming depressed, zonate, very firm. The margin is downrolled when young. Bruises a dark green when damaged, up to six inches in diameter. Here's a size reference for you. This is not a six inch one, but it is a. Generally, when I say six inches up to, that's the max it will get, and that's not all the most common. Beautiful gills. So, those gills are blue in color, they are adnate or decurrent, crowded. Frequent short gills, stain green when damaged. You can see a little bit of green in those gills there. Likely somebody pushed their finger into them when they picked this mushroom to take a photo. Uh, the, they bleed uh, blue latex when damaged. There's a cream spore print. Here's a stipe. So the stipe is blue, sometimes with darker blue spotting. Cylindrical. It has a central attachment, and these are filled with a pith that hollows away with maturity, just like all of the other species in this presentation today. This grows up to three inches high and one inch thick. These are mycorrhizal with pine and oak. They are terrestrial, solitary to scattered, and these are found summer through fall. So the best place to look for this would be in the eastern portions of the province um, and then anywhere where uh, jack pine continues on. Their edibility is choice. They do have a peppery taste but not overwhelmingly so. They are excellent in most dishes, very good in eggs, uh, good for pickling very good for intermediate mushroom pickers. There is somewhat of a market for these mushrooms as well. Um, so for anybody looking to get into professional mushroom picking, this is one that can be readily sold. Next species. This is the coconut milk cap, Lactarius glaciosmus. Not the most common species in Saskatchewan, but it is here. So, this is a pinkish tan cap, becoming more drab in color with age. This one here looks like it's getting a bit drab. Uh, they are convex, becoming depressed. You can see that depression beginning in the middle. They are zonate, but very faintly so. Um, fragile, they break easily. The margin is downrolled when young, sometimes wavy or upturned with age. And these grow up to about three inches in diameter. So this is a much smaller milk cap than what we've seen so far. Here's a size reference for you. And uh, the flesh is quite a bit thinner there too. It's a flesh on the cap. They are off-white to beige. They are adnate to decurrent. Uh, the gills are fairly, fairly crowded. The short gills are frequent. You can see quite a few short gills there. Uh, these produce a white latex. You can see some of that latex on the left hand side. And this creates a cream spore print. So the stipe is the same pinkish tan color as the cap. It is cylindrical, uh, it has a central attachment. Once again, you can expect this one to hollow out the pith as it ages. And these grow up to about three inches high. These are very specific with their ecology. They are mycorrhizal with alders, of which we have two in Saskatchewan, and paper birch. They are terrestrial. They are scattered to gregarious, sometimes forming clumps. These are found summer through fall, and they are relatively uncommon. If you want your chances to be increased, you should look for areas where species of alder connect with Birch. And you can look up the ranges of both online if you want to be more targeted in your mushroom hunting. Their edibility is quite good. Uh, they smell strongly of coconuts. I've also heard them described as smelling strongly of hand cream lotion. But uh, 
if I remember correctly, different hand creams smell very different indeed, so I'm going to go with the coconut. Uh, they do require a long cooking time, or they can cause some mild uh, gastrointestinal distress, and they are for intermediate mushroom pickers. Next species. Once again, this is going to be a very uh, subjective one if you don't like spicy foods. This is the red hot milk cap, Lactarius rufus. The cap is dark red, lighter towards the margin. This is a convex mushroom becoming depressed. It is zonate, it is firm. The margin is down rolled when young. It's up to five inches in diameter and it's got this kind of shiny surface to it, very reflective. Here is a size reference for you. So not the biggest mushroom, but very red. The gills are pale cream tinted with red. They are adnate, they are crowded, they have frequent short gills, they bleed a white latex, and they produce cream spores. The stipe should be the same red as the cap or similar. Uh, it is cylindrical, it has a central attachment to the cap and it is filled with the same pith that hollows away with maturity and it grows up to three inches high and a one inch thick. These are mycorrhizal with pine and birch so yes they definitely are present in Saskatchewan. They are terrestrial, solitary to scattered and found summer through fall. I think these are really good. They are extremely spicy. This is as far as I know, the spiciest mushroom that is not toxic in other ways that I know of. So is this going to be for the average mushroom picker? No, this will make you scream. Um, but for somebody who loves spicy food like I do and loves spicy curries and spicy Indian food and Mexican food, this is a great mushroom to pick, dehydrate and powder so that you can use it as a condiment to make things spicier and mushroomier. They are for intermediate mushroom pickers. Here's a lookalike alert. Once again, on the right, that's Lactarius tomatosus, the woolly milk cap. Um, it's also spicy, maybe about the same, maybe a little less, but it does contain those uh, mild toxins that will cause gastrointestinal upset for some people. And that's everything. If you like this video and you like me, the Mushroom Wizard, then please hit the subscribe button on your Facebook if you can do that. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time with another presentation concerning the mushrooms of Saskatchewan. Thank you.